Hey, what's going on, everybody? In this lesson, I'm going to be responding uh, to a question or a comment that one of the members made. I just want to respond to that and make sure we're understanding everything correctly. So the question was, my question is, what's the purpose for learning triads in term of where to apply it? In other words, if I'm playing a simple pop song in G major, what do I pull from this lesson and apply to the song? I know there is a purpose for learning triads, scales, arpeggios, etc., but sometimes I don't know what to do with it. Thanks. So I'm going to quickly show you guys an example of how to use this shifting triad exercise into your everyday playing, or in this case, a pop song. Uh, it can be used in uh, many genres of music, but in this case, a pop song. I'm going to be showing you an example of that. So here we go. So just a little overview of the lesson that we went over last time it was a G major scale. We played it two octaves. All right. Then afterwards, we did a triad shifting exercise. Right, to be able to shift from the third fret all the way up to the 12th fret with just those three notes consecutive going back and forth. So let me show you guys just a simple way. So just say, for instance, what if we're playing a pop song or any, any song doesn't matter. I'm just going to take a uh, common progression. Let's do uh, one, six, four, five. Very common progression. Four, five. All right, sounds great, right? Just playing the basic root notes. I'm playing the one, six, which is E, four, which is C, five, which is the D, all right? And this is going, this is piggybacking off of the modes exercise or the modes tutorials too as well. So we're calling out numbers, we're calling out uh, chord changes, which is, which is actually um, go along, goes along with the modes as well. That's like old school, like doo-wop, like. <laughs> All right, so just playing around, just giving you a little example of what you can do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the triads, just the triads for the bass line itself, right? So I'm gonna go from a G major triad. All right, and that was part of the shifting exercise. So one, four, one, one. So what I'm doing is I'm jumping from the third fret to the seventh fret, back to the fifth fret A string, and then uh, the fifth fret D string. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going triad octave. I'm ending on the octave of that note. All right, so if I can play the whole song like that, it will be, what would it be? It would be G major triad. All right, for the six, would it be a major or a minor? Six would be Aeolian, uh, which would be a minor triad. Okay, it will be of, of root, minor, third, then fifth. All right, so we have E, we can play, either play it here, or down here. So we have root, E, minor, third, fifth, and then the octave. Then we have, uh, where do we go? I'm on six, now we do four. All right, so four was what? Four is Lydian, Lydian mode that will be a major. The four will be a major chord. <clears throat> Excuse me, four will be a major chord. So we have a major triad. So root, major third, fifth, and then the octave, all right? And then five. Five will be the same thing. It will be a major triad. Because we're just using octaves. Use the actual arpeggio and use a, a flat seven, but in this in this case, let's just stick with the triad, all right? So I can play all of these in the same function, I guess. So for the first one, we're just going to be solely uh, solely uh, focusing on the first change. We're going to be using the G major triad, the shifting exercise. All right, so that finger, that specific fingering, one to the four, one, one. So you guys can get the idea. So that's how you would implement that triad. Uh, shifting exercise inside of your playing. It's just a simple, I do this to this day. I, I still do this exercise in this fill or this uh, riff or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I still do that to this day so I can get up here and it, make it, it makes it part of a bass line and at the same time, the higher you go, it sounds more like a fill. See what I mean? Sounds more like a fill. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not playing it as long. I'm kind of, I'm kind of playing it going to the next key change, making sure I end on that one on the, on the next key change, um, on the six. And in our, in our cases, we, it'll be E, all right? So 
we can go into that more in depth. But I just wanted to show you uh, a little later, but I just wanted to show you uh, the way that you can implement that inside of a song. All right, so I'll show you guys this bass line one more time, implementing the triad shifting exercise inside of it. And if you have any questions, you already know what to do. Comment below. I told you guys that I read your comments and I'll try to get to every single one of them. All right, so I'll be doing a lot more of these videos, just responding to you guys' question and uh, put it inside a video form like this. I just want to be able to help you guys. All right, so one more time. Uh, let's count it off. One, two, three, four. All right, so have fun with that, guys. Hopefully I explained it enough. If you have any questions, like I said before, you know what to do. Uh, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. And until next time, I'll see you.